Before we continue with the story today, I want to give a brief shout out to one of our sponsors, Miramate. Miramate is a sister company to Spooky2. And let's go ahead and just take a gander at the website for a moment because I am so excited about this product. Actually, there are so many products on this website, you guys. It is a PMF mat. So this is along the lines of Spooky2 where it's working with frequency, Tesla technology, to heal you basically of course a lot of people are familiar with the big mats that you can lay on that it works on your whole body but there's also like a mini magic mat as well that you can sit on there's the uh uva therapy um we also have these things these mirror mate mini magic you can take you guys you can take this on a run with you you just clip it to your outfit or hiking and it helps keep your body from basically falling apart while you are doing what you love to do analog pmf therapy involves the use of devices that emit low frequency electromagnetic waves these waves are designed to penetrate the body and stimulate cellular functions. Unlike digital PMF devices, which generate pulse signals using digital electronics, analog PMF devices produce continuous and smooth waveforms closely resembling the natural magnetic fields found in the environment. This can help with sleep problems, pain and, infl pain and inflammation, mood issues, fatigue and lethargy, and difficulty concentrating you guys there are so many products i swear to god i i just did a video i just filmed a video with brad you guys know brad he's with spooky too and with mirror mate and i could not get over the amount of products that this company actually has they have videos obviously of customer reviews so if you want to go on the website which we listed down below you can look at all of the customer reviews i mean their shop guys they have pmf machines the light devices, light cold laser devices. They have um, products for fertility. They have a specific product under um, under their cold laser devices that are specifically for your period for women. They have stuff for men's prostates. This is an incredible. I cannot wait to use this product myself. I, I am so 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 excited. Now, as always, with this product as well as Spooky Two, if you place my name. Bryce Watson, B-R-I-C-E-W-A-T-S-O-N, at discount, discount code, you will get 5% off of your purchase, just like with Spooky 2. So as always, everything will be down in the description box below. As Mira May, just like Spooky 2, has incredible customer services. They are really an incredible company. They've treated me very, very, very well. I know from some of you who've reached out to me, you tell me that they actually were so good to you as well. And they helped explain things to you and helped work you through using the product. So if this is something you're interested in, I would absolutely encourage you to try this product, get in touch with Brad and go ahead and explore the website. There's so many options, different price points of things you can do. And it's an excellent way to get your help back. All right, you guys. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Esoteric Atlanta. We're coming at you a little bit earlier in the week than we normally do with our coffee chats because both of us are going to be gallivanting. Um, it is obviously flooding in Florida right now. So I we were going to be going down there anyway, but we're going to be dealing with helping uh, deal with the land down there. Uh, we wish all our Floridians the best. Hopefully the rain will let up soon. But uh, Catherine, how are you doing today? Well, it's flooding over here in the UK as well. And we've had like a couple of weeks of absolute gorgeous weather and the heavens have opened. But I can say it's not flooding like Florida level. And my garden's very pleased it's raining. So, yeah, it's hard I'm when okay, you're on that been... sea level, yeah. you know? It's, yeah, that is really hard. I'm luckily up in the hills. But um, I, I am good. I'm a little bit weary at this stage in the, the year um so i'm looking forward to a nice little reset break just to um it is a working holiday for me but um it's going to be a good little reset with some fresh scenery some fresh ideas so yeah fresh air and i will fresh say that i'll go ahead and announce that on my channel too guys usually when i go away i like to have videos pre-planned a few at least while i'm gone but because of the algorithms 
I'm going to be breaking my channel, basically going dark for about 10 days just to kind of reset as well to help with the algorithms. And of course, Catherine, and I struggle, you know, and that it's a catch 22, isn't it, Catherine? Uh -huh. You know, when you when you're when you don't hit that, I'm, I'm trying to be careful how I say this, you know, when you don't hit the algorithm wave that you're probably saying something right, you know, because they're trying to hide you. Um, but it does help if you, you know, for those of you who own channels as well, where you get where you struggle with that, if you break it for a little while, sometimes it helps kind of it's like it's like YouTube forgets, you know, and so when you pop yeah. back up, all of a sudden you pop back up, right? So don't freak out. Um, you can follow me along on my Instagram if you want. I'll probably be posting pictures of all the flood and that kind of stuff in Florida. I know Catherine, your Instagram is popping. You have a huge Instagram now. Yeah, um, and I really love my Instagram audience because my Instagram is very much I do share a lot of you know be aware of this type thing but also share a lot of solutions so catherine.edwards.life and come join both of us on our instagram because um i will be sharing on there i won't be putting stuff on my channel when i'm away and i think what we're talking about with the whole um algorithm sort of things is the modern day problem really associated with what we're going to be talking about with our topic today about how easy it is with in these days with social media um to actually really influence in a direction that people want you to do um you know your mindsets and your the history that you do and don't see basically right are you being coerced into yeah. having an opinion that's not really your own opinion yeah yeah, it's interesting because we've kind of had these conversations off and on offline, Catherine, because you and I are, we're, pre we're pretty similar, I feel like as women, you mm -hmm. know, we, we, I, I am, um, I'm, I'm not a parent, I'm a parent to a four legged little boy, but I'm not a parent to a human. So I don't have that experience of being a parent to a human, um, which I know is different than a four legged child. Um, so I, that play, I, I can't really speak from that perspective. But as a woman, I'm definitely more of the nester between my boyfriend and myself. Um, but I also like to, to create, I obviously, I like to have a job. I like to work. And I think you're kind of the same way, Catherine, like you're a mother of multiple beings, human and four legged. Um, but you also are smart. You've been, you, you, we, both of us have been university. We, you know, we value our education. We value our contribution to stuff outside of the house as well. And so we're at this like crossroads almost. And, this kind of goes back and you know you and i Catherine, we've been kind of like there's nothing black and white everything is complex there's yeah. what's right for me might not be right for some somebody else or another woman and there's this phenomenon that's going on on TikTok or instagram with the younger generation the generation uh z who is now coming up in the 20s called trad wives and this stands for traditional wives where a lot of these younger women really believe in their heart that we need to go back to a time where women didn't go to university, where women's main priority was getting married, having children, being homemakers, which isn't wrong. I'm not saying that's wrong, but a lot of women in their 40s and 50s and 60s and our demographic are pushing back and being like, this might not be the, the fairy tale you think it is. Um, a lot of these women are saying, listen, I did what you did. I be I wanted to be a mom and a housewife and it was great and dandy for 20 years and then my husband left. And now I'm 60 and I can't retire and I don't have an education. So I kind of wanted to, to kind of talk about that a little bit with you guys, because the way the trad wife phenomenon is being sold is like, this is the only way that we're going to have a good society again, is if we go back yeah. to this place where women are in the home. And so before I get into some of the statistics, Catherine, do you have anything you want to add to that? I think like you said, I think that the important thing is to understand that we, as we say, we sound like a broken record, it's not black and white, things are complex. And when you're making any sort of decision for your life, you know, people are getting into adulthood, they're wondering when to settle down. It's really important to examine your options because divorce rates are off the scale. It's very clear what's happening at the moment is not working. It, um, a huge majority of children are being brought up in one parent households. And that comes, Shanti and I covered that a bit actually um last week on her channel and that comes with a lot of challenges and again it's like it's not encouraging people to stay in abusive relationships at all yeah. but to understand the grass isn't always greener 
So I, in one respect, I think it's really good that this is coming up as a discussion and people are looking and saying, now, come on now, this things are pretty broken in terms of the family. Let's look. But at, equally, I'm, I'm old enough and wise enough to know anything time something's being pushed as a real trend, that that's not a people-led movement that's coming from the controllers of the platform to try and push this out. And uh, a lot of people watching this will know about the hippie agenda. They'll know about getting both partners out to work agenda so they can control the children and get double incomes. So there's a lot of downsides of that. So I'm viewing it with real caution as to say, why is this being pushed? Who is going to benefit from this? And we can have an interesting discussion about that. Absolutely. And I, I, I yeah, cause like my sister would be what you consider a trad wife. Mm. She is a homemaker. She has four children and she loves it. That's what she's always wanted to do. She even makes her own bread now, you know, and, and but my sister also went to university and has a degree. And I will say too, Catherine, if we take the, the establishment out of the equation, when it comes to marriage or a partnership, and I know people might push back, especially if you're younger, but I feel like there's some truth into what I'm going to say. In order for a woman to have a successful and happy life as a trad wife, as a traditional wife, is going to come down to your husband. Because mm -hmm. my women who have, like my sister, is married to an incredible man who is so loving and supportive of my sister and wants my sister to be happy. My sister has no restraints on money. She can spend what she needs. He trusts her with money. She's she's free to come and go as she wants. But there are women who are in these roles of traditional wife where they are treated like a child themselves mm -hmm. where they are pretty much enslaved. And so it all comes down to the dy dynamic. I think of the partnership too, like, um, you know, I mean, my, and, and also in the United States, it comes down to your state as well. Like my parents, my mother was a housewife. My mother also has a university education, but she was a housewife when my, my sister and I were growing up. And when my parents got divorced, I was in college when they started to get, when they started the process of getting divorced. Um, because Georgia, where I live, the state is what we call a mom and best state. That's the literal term, which means that the woman in a divorce, nine times out of 10, is going to walk away with most of the assets. Wow. So my, my mother, yeah. So there's a lot of conservative states are that way. It's called a mom and best state. That's the actual term. So a wow. lot of states in the Southeast are that way. So my mother walked away with 70% of my father's assets when they wow. got divorced. And that's, that's typical of Georgia. And, and she had, you know, my sister was, I was over the age. My, my small mom had full custody of my sister, obviously with the understanding that my dad could see her whenever he wanted to, um, full on alimony, full on child support. You know, I know in Georgia that the laws over 10 years of marriage, then one of the spouses can apply for alimony. My father though, with that being said, was a veterinarian or is a veterinarian who owned his own clinic. So financially, he did really well for himself. And so that benefited my mother. And the state will recognize that as my mother, who was a housewife, who raised the children, who did all the work in the home, the state of Georgia recognizes that as an actual job and therefore compensates the woman through the divorce proceedings. You know, and so and so but if you're in California, that's a different story there. That's not a mom and his best state. And so you're kind of screwed. You know, and so it all there's all these different spinning wheels involved in everybody's story and everybody's story is going to be going to be different. Now, Catherine, I told you, too, we talk about our ancestors, um, our most recent ancestors, even your grandparents. And we think, you know, a lot of the, the trad wife, the pros of this is people talk about how marriages were just so much more sacred back then and how people didn't get divorced and you're you're right Catherine. the divorce ep epidemic is through the roof right now mm -hmm. and i do think that we got to come back to the middle a little bit where people do take marriage seriously and honor their vows and only divorce if it's ab absolutely necessary um where people nowadays have like a starter marriage you know like we used to have oh, completely. Yeah. yeah it is i mean i know so many multiple marriages i've gone when you're sitting there for the third or fourth time listening to people repeating their vows and you're thinking well why are you even bothering because you, you, they don't mean anything to you yeah. and again this isn't about people being stuck in abusive marriages but it's also like what's the point of getting married these days you can just live with each other yeah. why go through the marriage if if the vows mean nothing to you because there is this um definite we've gone from one extreme you know certainly my grandmother's generation they did not have the choice, most women, yeah. unless they came from a wealthy family. When they got married, they were stuck. And yeah. they just 
couldn't leave their husbands because there was nowhere for them to go, no financial support at all. It was impossible really for them to leave. And therefore the men knew that. And some men were great with that and a lot of them weren't. So uh, there were a lot of people in that generation that really did not have a choice. The women had to stick it out. They had to. They had to. Yeah, absolutely. And so we have to, instead of looking at the past with rose-colored glasses, we have to look at the reality of the situation. Two things can be true. Yes, I think marriage was way more um, respected back then than it is now. However... There wasn't a lot of outs for women back then. And that's where I want to pull up the statistics, you guys. I am shook. I've got a few pages pulled up here. I was telling you, Catherine, that at first I looked at the United States and then I went and looked. I actually just typed in like European countries and I only pulled up a few. Uh, I'm going by the, the demographics of who watches my channel. I know I have some people in Asia and Africa. I only really looked at though. Uh, you know, my demographics are United States, Canada, England, Australia, and Europe. So um, that's what I have right here. And now, wherever you live in the world, I want you to do further investigation into these laws. And we're going to get into why there's loopholes with these laws as well. So France seems to be the country that was kind and, and Australia. We're going to get to Australia in a minute. That was kind of on the brink of giving women more rights. So in 1881... Single women in France were allowed to open savings accounts without their husband's permission. In 1895, married women were also allowed to make deposits and withdrawals without their husband's approval. Now, a lot of these laws we're going to look at, guys, again, if you look at your own country, you might think, oh, great, that's when it, no. Some of these laws only apply to either singled women, so spinsters, as they were called back then, old maids who had no husbands. A lot of these laws were, were not granted to married women. Okay, so Germany, women were not allowed to open up a bank account in Germany until 1958. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. 1950. My mother was born in 1957. You know, like, so think about World War II. How many German women in World War II probably could not flee even if they wanted to because they had no money? They had no money of their own to get on a freaking train and leave. All right. 1970 spine spine <laughs> 1975 spain abolished the legal requirement for married women to have permission to work travel abroad our own property wtf the permission to travel abroad is what got me so up until 1975 a spanish woman literally had to have a written permission slip from her husband to cross the border into France? Are oh you God. kidding me? Yeah. Are you kidding me? It's amazing women even have their own oh. passports nowadays. United States. So the in the United States, you, uh, women in the United States were granted the right to open a bank, a bank account on their own in 1974 with the passage of the Equal Credit Opportunity Act. So I even looked deeper into this the United, the United States. So this isn't just about bank accounts. This was the right for a woman to open up a credit card. This was also the right for, for a woman to own a, to get a mortgage on a house. Okay. So that in the UK, it was the year after 1975. And I'll go to, I'm going to look at the UK as well. I have a page. Well, it's basically the same thing that happened in the United States. Before that, I was reading its statistics because the United States and the UK are almost identical. They're, the laws are called different, but they're identical in the way. And they were just a year apart. If a woman before that, let's say, Catherine, let's say that you're in the UK, I'm in America. Let's say it's 1972 and you and I are doing what we're doing. And we decide we want to open up a buy a buy coastal or a, a business in both the UK and America. But we're both the co-owners. But we need a business loan. Both Catherine and I would have to have our husbands, our partners, our fathers, our brothers come with us to the bank to grant us permission to get a business loan. Now, in the 1970s, you guys, like my mother graduated high school in 1974. What? Uh, Canada, the in Canada, 1964. Uh, women were allowed to open up a bank account without their husband's signatures. Now, I'm going to pull some other pages up. Tell me if it's, sometimes it doesn't switch. Does it switch? Did you see it switch? Yeah, that okay. switch. Yeah. So let's look at the UK. Women in the UK were allowed to open up a bank account in their own name in 1975, 
with the passing of the Sex Discrimination Act. This act made it illegal to discriminate against women in work, training, and education, meaning that banks had to treat women equally to men. Before this, many banks required married women to have their husband's permission to open an account. Even after 1975, single women may not have been able to apply for a loan or a credit card without their name, without in their own name, without their father's signature. So that's why I'm saying you have to look at these laws because even after 1975 in the UK, Catherine might have still needed her daddy to come to the bank with her so she could get a loan. That's batshit crazy to me. This is 19... This isn't... We're not talking 1875. We're not talking 17... This is 1975, you guys. 1975. This is modern times. We already had the TV at this point. Are you kidding me? Now, let's look at... All, I think I have one or all... Okay. In 1965, the law of July 13th allowed married women to become bank clients on the same basis as single women and widows. However, before the Married Women's Property Act of 1882, women's property automatically belonged to their husbands. So many banks required married women to get their husband's permission to open an account. In the 1960s, women also need their husband's permission to get a checkbook. So I want to talk about the... Um, isn't that wild, Catherine, first of all? like I'm It's unbelievable. I can't wait to go and ask my mum about this because she'll know. And she actually used to work in a bank, so she will know. Oh, I'd love to hear um, that. So I will go and I will be quizzing her later. Um, but it, this is what I mean, is I don't think people really understand just how different it was, how close in history. So a lot of people of my parents' generation, the husband ha covered all the finances. So the women had no idea whether the husband had got them into financial debt or something like that. So it was really, they were really vulnerable. And, you know, people, the women tended to get the criticism for it. Like, how did you not know? But they had no access to that no information. So I think this is the thing about when you're going into stuff, it's really important. I mean, I had no idea what you said about the difference in the states in America because everyone sort of, it's a standard thing that people sort of think when you get divorced, you know, the women gets, takes a man to the cleaners. Well, I've got loads of friends and family members have got divorced and that's not been the case at all. And even if the courts ruled a certain amount, they've never actually got money off the man. Because yeah. um, once, it, just because you're told to pay doesn't mean you will. We, If there's one thing that everyone's woken up to i think over the last few years is just because something's illegal doesn't mean it's not going to happen at right. all levels through society so th it's so fascinating to sort of see i suppose if people are going back to traditional wives now they're doing it with the current equity systems in place but equally if you are a traditional wife and, and laws do vary that much in different areas, because let's face it, how much do people really look into this side of things until something goes wrong? So I did not understand, Bryce, until one of my really good friends a few years ago had a stroke and he was married, been married for years. And in the UK, and I understand this is the same, but correct me if I'm wrong, in America, if you do not have legal power of attorney, for health and finances, even if you're married to the person or they're your child or your parent, you do not have say over their medical care in the hospital. Speaking which I can't partners, believe. Speaking of partners, mine just walked in. Hold on one second, let me let the dog out. We're filming, so. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. Nothing like filming. See, we're not in a Hollywood studio, we're in our own home. Yeah, my cat, my dog's <laughs> getting up ready to think. But you know, so there's a lot of these things, I think, it's really important for people to have the conversation around because you don't realise until something goes wrong. No one goes into marriage thinking they're going to be the ones getting divorced. Right, right. You know, some, some people prepare well, particularly if one partner is well off and the others isn't. Some people will put prenuptial agreements in place and things. But most people, the vast majority of people, get married assuming that, you know, they found the love That's of their it. life. It's going yeah. to last for ages. We know statistically... That doesn't happen very often at the moment. And the chances are more likely that you're not going to stay together than you are. And therefore, it's really important to look into these scenarios because particularly people that have children, you haven't then got the freedom to, you know, go out to work full time necessarily or move to a different area or how you're going to afford a house. And, you know, if you separate the two things, there's, 
it, it, it's very different when you're young free and single and you're just thinking about yourself and what you need mm -hmm. to survive to what you're doing when you've got a family to support. I wonder how many women in history have stayed in really awful situations for the sake of the children having a roof over their head, you know? Yeah. It, it's heartbreaking. And it's so funny, too. Well, yeah, like what you're saying, again, the United States, it comes down to state laws. So, wow. like, um, my this might be a little personal, but, like, my father. So when my parents got divorced, we were also in the Deep South. And both of my parents come from pretty prestigious families. So for my dad, if my dad were to like not pay what the court ordered him to pay, it would have looked really bad on his on his family. So that kept my dad in check to make sure he's yeah. still standing with the community. Now, with that being said, you know, my sister and I have had conversations a lot about my, my dad is now remarried and he's the woman he's married to is not very nice. And she's done some nasty things to us. And so there's been some concern that when my father does pass away that my sister and I will just have will be written out of the will but in the state of Georgia if as the as the biological children if he wrote a will and we were not we could contest it because we're the biological children and nine times out of the ten the judge is going to overturn the will and give everything to the biological children so in certain cultures that wow. works in your favor like tradition works in your favor and I, the, where I live in the world it works in my favor now even like so, like, we have in the United States, we have common law. So, um, like, relationships, what I'm saying. So, like, if you're with somebody for seven years and you're not married, the state recognizes you as married. So, like, if you're with a man and you've lived together for eight years and something happens where the man just up and leaves you, you could literally go to an attorney and treat it like a, a divorce. And get because the state will recognize that you have in, invested equity into the relationship, even though you're not married, the state will recognize you as such, even with custody issues with dogs, especially you guys, even even though California is not a traditional uh, common law state. I don't know if I told you this, Catherine, but California now recognizes animals as children. And so there's custody disputes. So the law will. So if you so if something were to happen to my boyfriend and me, our dog would be looked at by the state if we lived in California as a child. Mm. And there would have to be a support, financial support given for the, the dog, you know, which is awesome for California, even though California is not a traditional, you know, mama knows best state. So it's it's crazy to me. I mean, and I and I, I say that too, you know, wherever you're coming from, if you're looking at this trad wife trend, whatever country you're in, look at the history of women's rights. Because even when I'm reading to you guys, as we've just read, a lot of these laws first apply just to single women, which makes sense, right? If you're a spinster, as they called them, or an old maid, and you didn't have a husband, you needed a way to support yourself. But the scary thing is, is that married women were the last to receive the rights. Mm. And sometimes the married women, in, a, in cases of abuse, were the ones who needed them the most, mm. you know? And that's what's terrifying. Um and so, you know, like I look, you know, and you do, you know, you do, I would hope that nobody's going to get married with the thoughts of this could be temporary. But I also think too, in that same respect nowadays, when you get married, maybe ask yourself, how would this person treat me if we were to get divorced? Would the, you know, I look at like my, my, my brother-in-law and my sister, and my brother-in-law are two peas in a pod. They have an incredible relationship. I, don't but I look at my brother-in-law and I know if something were to happen he would absolutely make sure my sister was okay and those kids were I'm okay. going to stop you on that I'm I think I'm so? completely disagree because I have lost track of the amount of really lovely and it's not always the man it can be the woman as well that's behaved yeah. completely unreasonably in a divorce but most people, again, no one in their right minds is going to marry someone if they didn't think they will. But where it comes to, where even with inheritance, where money's involved, people can, can turn into completely different people. People change. Stresses happen in life. So I, I don't think you can assume that about anyone, I'm afraid. The reason I say that too, though, so many times. his family is very old Southern family, like my dad's family. So yeah. it would also be the pressure of his family to keep up appearances. Yeah. Which again plays in your favor. That's when tra tradition plays in your favor. Yeah. Um, yeah, when, you know, it does. 
I just think with, with, you know, and I, I get the benefits of having a traditional wife. There are so mm. many benefits of having the mother at home. There are so many benefits health wise, emotionally, mentally of having, and the woman most of the time is the primary caregiver. The woman is the one that is emotionally like knows her baby. I mean, I'm sure Catherine, when your kids were little, you probably could pick your, your kids cry out of a nursery full of crying babies. As oh, completely. Yeah, completely. Yeah. Yeah. So and, and, and mothers have that like I uh, I was born kind of colicky and jaundiced so I cried a lot as a kid and uh, as a baby and my my dad told my mom this when I was an infant that it's okay Alice you you sleep I'm gonna sleep in the nursery with Bryce we'll bottle everything I'll feed her so you get you get a night of sleep my mother tells a story so she she's sleeping in the bed and she hears me crying and she thinks oh okay Lee's gonna get her Lee's gonna get her I keep crying I keep crying I keep crying my mom gets out of bed opens the door to the nursery my dad is sound asleep snoring and i'm mm -hmm. literally beside him in the bassinet he just slept right through it so there is biological and I, I know there's great fathers out there i know there's incredible fathers out there but generally speaking women do have a natural need to protect their children the dog the mother dog and her four puppies the last trip i went to india brought a mother dog and her four puppies back um at rescued them and the mother and her four puppies were all rescued by families that lived in the same vicinity. So like once a year, they all get together. And I kid you not, they always send me videos. Those puppies know that that's their mother. And that mother dog still knows that's her puppies. Yeah. Because those dogs come, they, they submit to her. She cleans them. She licks them clean. The, she gets so excited. So women just know that's their baby and they want to hold and nurture their baby. So there's so many, I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to sound like a feminist. Like I'm just mm -hmm. saying we have to be aware of everything that, that could possibly happen. And there could be a lot of danger. I think every woman should get an education. Absolutely should have an education. Um, my sister has her education, you know, because what happens if you do have to go back to work? After well, again, I'm gonna I'm gonna butt in there and sort of say I don't know how useful university degrees are now in the real world. You know, back in our time, it was definitely the thing to do. But you know, with everything that's happening in the world now, I would say, uh, would every woman should know the skills they need to support themselves if they trade. Need. I don't think it needs to be a university education at all because I think actually in a lot of today's world that can be pretty meaningless quite honestly or like a trade uh, just know how to do yeah something. a trade or yeah something Her hair so something yeah. you can do to to uh, bring in an income um yeah you know, and also to really understand, have an understanding of, um, because equally a lot of men who have traditional wives, you know, sometimes it's fine, but other times the wives can put a huge amount of pressure on the husband because the wives don't necessarily understand how hard it is to get a promotion at work, how hard it is to get that extra bonus, you know, and so there can be an awful lot of pressure. So it works both ways. So making sure you've got that open dialogue about these things because you can't predict and you don't want to be sort of over risk management things but you do need to make sure you've got that open dialogue to talk about things because equally there's many a husband that's got really into debt from the pressure from their wives because they haven't got the nerve to tell them that no they haven't got the money they need to stop spending yeah you know it's uh it's also as you're saying that too i'm thinking about like situations where a partner will unexpectedly pass away young Mm. Or my dad's dad uh, had a, a heart attack, a near death experience in his mid forties, and he was out of work for two years. My grandmother had to go back to work. That was unexpected, you know, and it was really hard for them because financially, all of a sudden, he was the main breadwinner, winner, and all of a sudden, he was not able to work for two years. This was, mm. I mean, he's now long gone. So this was like got over 50, 60 years ago, you mm. know, and so he ended up doing really well for himself when he, but that, that time period where he could not work, he literally physically could not work. It fell on my grandmother to make sure yeah. that all the bills were paid. So you can't, you know, I think, and I guess, you know, daydreaming and, and seeing the future as bright is, is definitely a, a, a gift of the, of the youth, of youth. Right. But I think for women, my biggest concern Yes, if you want to be a trad wife, that's awesome. That's great. That's wonderful. Find us a, a partner that you are comfortable with because you are going to rely on each other. You are going to have to rely on him for, for money, you know, um, but also be very, very well aware 
of what can go wrong, of mm. why, you know, don't be under the uh, um, delusion that every single woman of the past stayed with their husband because they valued their vows or they has, don't be under that delusion. Go look at the laws and, and women did not, you know, it's interesting, Catherine, I found out and again in the state of Georgia, and I only learned this when I was going through the werewolf of Georgia story. The Georgia, the state of Georgia was one of the first states in the union to grant women the right to inherit mm. in the 1800s. So for a long period of time, if you come from a wealthy family and you're a female, your trust, your trust fund or your inheritance will never be managed by you. It will go from your father to your brother or to your husband. You will never touch it. Georgia was one of the first states to say, no, women should be able to rightly inherit from their parents without having to have a male manage it for them. You know, so, and that was in the 1800s, guys. That was like two, so this has not been that long. It hit For most of history, women have been very, They've, they've been like in survival mode because they weren't considered equal to men by the law, you know? Completely. Yeah, and I think there's some really interesting points there, Baj, because I think, you know, going in, I mean, I'm, I am quite delighted that there's a lot of young people that are looking at that because looking back and having been a working mum myself, it's really, really hard on both partners, really, yeah. really hard. It's really hard on the children. Um, so I think it would be there's so many positives in that but I think equally understanding the lessons for where it didn't work for women in the past you know if you've got a relationship with your grandparents speak to them yeah. you know find out what what was well and what didn't and then put in different communication strategies like anyone I would say is a traditional wife make sure you have full access to to bank accounts so you can see what money's coming in what's money's coming out um and it's all transparent and yeah. those things if you put some simple controls in place you can avoid complications on both sides because you know it can be equally there's different pressures for the man and the woman but i think in terms of the modern agenda and what they're trying to do for control things i think actually going back to some traditional value family values is one of the most important things that we can do just do it with your eyes open and be aware because of those statistics you showed me have completely shocked me. Oh, it's, 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 sh it's so shocking. I, I agree with you 100%. I want to make that very clear. You guys, I know people get very upset. Again, two things can be true, right? Yeah. Two things can be true. It, I agree. It is, you know, it's, it's nice to know that there are women that are making home cooked meals for their kids again. You know, I, there is a joke that the, us uh zennials the elder millennials early 80s that we're not aging and somebody said it's because in the 80s we grew up on fake food and so uh, we're just fake now um you know um, we, we did grow up in the 80s a lot of people were had two households so they were eating mcdonald's and eating yeah. you know, and so health fell down because and we know that's an agenda we know there's a, a there's a huge agenda to that taxing more taxes um kids are more free range they don't have the discipline uh at home like they did in the past they don't have you know the yeah. home cooked meals they don't have you know we we understand that we totally get that but on the flip side there is also a danger of just of knowing not how to protect how, how can you protect yourself and i agree with you catherine i think it's so important if you are a traditional wife that you sit down with your husband when you pay the bills and see what money is going out how much money is coming in each month because you have an you're in agreement with him you are working in the home you are absolutely 100 percent a working human being in the home and he's mm. the one bringing in the money. And, you know, I think about that now, like my boyfriend takes on the responsibility of most of our bills. So in that sense, we do have kind of a traditional setup, but I know every single password to all of his bank accounts. Mm. I know everything. I can look at his bank account at any time I want, you know? And so do you have that freedom to, to know where you stand financially? I'll kind of, I, I, it's reminding me of a story and I'm not gonna say the name of the person. So I grew up with a boy Lots of boys, not one singular boy, but I grew up with lots of boys. But this one particular boy I grew up with from the time we were little, really little, all the way up through we grew up together. And his father was a doctor um, and his mother was a housewife. And a few years ago, maybe about 10 years ago, um, he had moved back home with his mother because his father, who was a, a doctor, had passed away, got sick and passed away. And the reason why he needed to move back home with his mother is because his mother did not even know how to pump her own gas. She had no idea. 
if they actually owned their house and their land. She had no idea what bills they paid. Mm. They, she had lived such tradi a traditional wife role and it was a, a they were such sweet people. She was the, they, it wasn't, he wasn't abusive at all, but he passed away. He got cancer and died young. And so my friend in his thirties, this is like 10 year, 10 ish years ago in his thirties had to move back home with his mother to sit there and go through all the finances and show her live with her for a while. So he knew that she knew how to do all these things, yeah. including pump her own damn gas in the car, you know? So, so this idea of women being, this is not a foreign, this is, this was yesterday. Like this, and his, historically I was texting you, Catherine. I was like, we are literally the first generation to be totally free as women. Yeah, completely, completely. I'm yeah. not even getting in the right to vote. That's not even a part of that. That's not even And actually, you've just reminded me of something really important because, of course, now it's going the other way where people are taking the rights of parents away from their children. So now with all the God knows what woke agenda, um, you can't even, a lot of the time, the parents don't have a right to know what's being discussed with their children with the health with their mental health, with what sex they want to be or anything, the, child, the parents are excluded. So, you know, this is where I think things are going so dangerously the other way. So it's great that we're catching this sort of people wanting to course correct. Just go in with your eyes open and make sure that you're protected. Absolutely. And I agree with you. I'm going to reiterate that one more time for those in the back that think we're, we're, we're pushing the feminist movement. We're not. We're no. just saying, we're just saying, Look at all different scenarios. If you want to be a housewife, that's amazing. I am, I am, that is awesome. I don't think I would be that great of a housewife. I, I need to have something else to do. I like, I like to work and do things outside the house. But if that's what you like, then that's fantastic. But just make sure that you are not falling into a position where you're going to lose everything. You know, make sure that you you're you're well you're well versed, and go make all the bread you want, and make the nutritious foods. That's fantastic. That's awesome. But as uh, all these other women are warning these younger women, just make sure that you know what you're doing. You know, don't take advantage, or don't you know, don't take for for granted what women before us before us have gone through to get us to the point where we can actually have our own checking account. It's just crazy. Catherine, I have a checking account, a business checking account, a savings account. All this is just in my name. The mm. fact that that was only, I was born in 1983. So nine, that was only granted to women nine years before I was born. What? Exactly. What? Like that is crazy to me. And so I feel like, you know, for the women who have, worked hard to get us to a place where we can't have our own money. Thank you. Mm. Thank you for, for giving us that, that chance to, to have that, that, that flexibility and that ability to leave. If you are in a bad situation, you do have the ability to leave. And also you do, you do need to realize there's so much talk. Sorry, I've got something in my eye. There's so much oh, talk okay. about digital currencies and and everything and and i also want people to really take this and say how much control for things that we need for our day-to-day -day lives are in the hands of people that own organizations that are making decisions on our behalf yeah. yeah because at the end of the day the money in our bank isn't even ours anyway you know if the big crashes come then we're not going to get access or ever see that money again so i know this is a complicated area i suppose the thing for me is going back I was listening to something um, and, you know, just making sure that you do know how to cook, that you do know how to mend your car. Um, did, all the modern digital cars are a nightmare because they're all computer driven. You know, when I got my first car, it was very basic and you had a manual and everyone could learn how to change the oil and change the starter plug and, you know, change the clutch and things if they wanted to. Now, of course, the more technologically advanced things are, most people can't do that because you need specialist equipment to do it. So going back to some of the good traditional things where other people can't take control of your electric car and things like this, but it, it feeds into it. So getting back more control of your household, your family life is really important. But it's exciting to think of these young people starting out in their areas, doing it with eyes wide open. Yeah. Not because they have to. <laughs> not because they have to. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I, I, we both, both my boyfriend and I are holding on to our cars for dear life because yeah. 
they're not controllable by you know the yeah. newer like it's it's safe it's a safety factor for us to make sure that we have total control and you brought up a good point i will say yeah i think it is important if, if you're on the total opposite side you think everybody needs a corporate job blah 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 maybe you should learn how to make bread maybe yeah. you should learn how to do things because i mean look at what's happening with the stock market right now you mm -hmm. know like can you forage do you know mm -hmm. men? Do you know how? If you want your wife to be a traditional wife and be at home baking, if that's something a man wants, then men, can you go out and forage? Do you know mm -hmm. how to play the traditional alpha role to make sure that the family can survive when the grid, if, if the grid were to shut down? You know, so it's, it's and everyone living in a town or big city, you know, where are you even going to go and forage? <laughs> Do you see what I mean? It's like, you know, so I think that there's, there's a lot of advantages and it's lovely to see these um, discussions. I really can't wait to see, you know, what everyone in the chat is doing. I mean, I'm loving the fact that these conversations have come up. So I've gone back to growing my own vegetables, not as much as I like, because it's very time consuming, actually. Um, you know, it, it, being a housewife, a proper housewife is a, absolutely a full time job. 100%. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. So, yeah, guys, just before we sign off, just to reiterate, for those in the back who did not hear us, we're not saying trad why the uh, phenomenon is bad at all. We're mm. just having a conversation about the pros and the cons just so that we can move forward and evolve forward. Instead of going back, we can go forward with more wisdom so we don't have to repeat the mistakes of our ancestors. We can actually do what would take what was right from our ancestors and yeah. what was right from our experiences and make a make a better tomorrow. So I cannot wait to hear um, your thoughts down in the comment section below. I'm gonna ask for because I know we have we have pretty much the same audience, Catherine. So we have people from all over the European countries, especially. So if I read off a country that you're from and you were shocked by how like I was like, I text you. I was like, I am sh like, I can't literally. believe it. Yeah. Like I'm so mad right now that this was so just yesterday that this actually mm. was given to us. So I want to know if you were shocked by that. If you are from a country that I did not read off, let us know in the comment section below, like research it. What, what year did women in your country get the right to have their own checking account without having a father or a husband sign off for it? I want to know, did you learn something? And what are your thoughts? Like, are you a traditional housewife? Do you feel secure as a traditional housewife? If, if you are a traditional housewife, it, are there things that you've implemented with your husband that are really healthy that can help contribute to this conversation? And for younger women who are just starting their families, like some advice you can give them to make sure that they're not stuck in a situation that might be um, detrimental to them later on? Like, what are some precautions they can take? Uh, let us know down in the comment section below. Are you a working mother and you really love being a working mother? And, you know, you think that that's good as well. Just let us know. Down. There's no right or wrong answer, guys. Every no right or wrong. Yeah. yeah. So, can't wait. I can't wait. I'll All right, guys. In a couple of weeks. Yeah, I'll be gone next week, and then we'll be back in a couple of weeks on Catherine's channel. If you are new to my channel, we do this bi-weekly, but next week we'll be out. So I'll put all Catherine's links down in the description box below. Also, if you're new to Catherine has a whole, whole career outside of YouTube. So I will put her website down there oh, as well you. for her holistic healing. And um, just to reiterate, Catherine, for my audience members who might be new or not from the UK, you can work with people on Zoom, right? They don't have to fly to Oh, YouTube. yeah, absolutely. All, all over the world. Yeah. yeah. To yeah. just teleport to your health, guys. Um, so, um, All right. Have a brilliant time, everyone. Bye, guys. Bye, -bye. Bye everybody.